I'm going to share something with you here, okay? Is that all right? It's going to take just a few minutes. Uh, you know, we're, in February, we talked about becoming a disciple, being a disciple, learning and applying what we've learned. And so I, I read something a few months ago that I just never had hit me before. I just never realized it. And I'm reading through uh, the book of Acts, and, and this, it just hits me. And so I learned it, and now I'm applying it. And so I want to tell you what I've learned, and then I'm going to tell you how I've applied it, okay? And maybe if you want to learn it and apply it too, it'd be great, but it's been, a, it's been amazing, 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 amazing in my life. And it's, it started a few months ago, and uh, so uh, if you have your Bible, turn to Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Do we all know that the Word of God is living and powerful? That's what Hebrews 4.12 tells us. The Word of God is living and powerful. So let me just share this out of Acts chapter 3, verse 1. I'm just going to read a bunch of scripture. I'm not really going to teach, but you're going to see a theme as I go along. Okay, so see if you can catch the theme here. Okay, of this, because I've never seen this theme before but, uh, until a few months ago. We all know the story uh, in Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 10, it says, now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Here's this lame man begging at the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. Now he says, I don't have silver and gold, but I've got something, and here, I'm going to give it to you. And here's how he starts. He says, in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Skip down to verse 12. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people. And he said, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus. Amen? <laughs> glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Skip down to 16. And here's what Peter, so Peter continues to talk, and here's what he says. He says, and his name, whose name? Jesus' Jesus name. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Okay, so they go out and they're preaching. And so the, uh, and so the, the Sadducees, the temple police, they come, they lay hands on him, and they bring them back to meet with the priests and the Sadducees. And uh, so skip down to Acts chapter 4, verse 7. Acts chapter 4, verse 7. And when they, they being the Sadducees and the priests, and when they had set them, them being the disciples, in the midst, they asked. Now listen, w- listen to the question. This is going to be a very interesting question. By what power or by what name have you done this? Isn't that an interesting question? They didn't say, how did you do it? They said, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you whole. This is the stone, he's quoting an Old Testament 
verse, this is the stone which was re rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name. Are y'all, can y'all see a theme developing here? There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Skip down to verse 15. So when the priests had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on, that from now on what? That from now on they speak to no man in this name. And they called them and they commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. Now, isn't that interesting? You can teach and you can preach, and it feels like they're saying, you can go do miracles, just don't do it in the name of Jesus. Amen? But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it's right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. But we cannot but, we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Go down to verse 23. And being let go, the disciples being let go, they went to their own companions, they went to the rest of the disciples, and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. Now skip down to verse 29. They're talking among themselves, and here's their prayer. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name, through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And then when they prayed in the name of Jesus, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Isn't it amazing? There's something about the name. And, the, and here's amazing, the Sadducees, the Old Testament people, they understood the name, that there was something in particular important about the name. And so then the disciples get thrown in prison, the angels open the door of the prison, they go preach in the temple. Once again, they're grabbed out of the temple and they're brought before the high priest. Remember this? Okay. So let's go back, let's skip a few more verses, let's go to chapter 5, verse 27. Acts chapter 5, verse 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? They're getting a little frustrated at this point. There's something about the name, the name of Jesus. And look, you filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter, remember this famous statement, but Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey men rather than God. Right? So they, so they release him, threaten him not to do anything else. And then Gamaliel, Gamaliel, one of the teachers of Israel, Acts chapter 5, verse 38. This is just amazing. Now listen to this. This is amazing. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. He's speaking to the council. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. And they agreed with him, and when they called for the apostles and beaten them, what did they do? They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus. Is this amazing? And let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame, not for the Lord, for his name. Obviously for the Lord, but for his name. Do you think there's something significant in it? about the name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. So when I read this, I realized there's something about that. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I can, at some point, I think, I think I'm starting to get this. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, uh, we're talking about the, the enemy coming to attack us. I don't know if you remember, but in Jude, verse 9, by the way, there's only one chapter in Jude, so it's not Jude chapter, it's just Jude 9, okay? In Jude 9, it says, when Michael the archangel, Michael the archangel, 
was arguing or disputing with the devil over Moses' body. Now this is, I mean, like what? So here's Michael the archangel and, and the devil disputing over Moses' body. And it says that Michael did not dare revile him, but said to him, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. One of the names of God, the Lord rebuke you. There's something powerful about the name. As Christians, we can invoke the name of Jesus. And that's what I've started doing. I've started invoking the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because I want the devil to know who I'm talking about. And there's, I'm, I'm just, I just keep using the name. I just keep saying the name. I just keep repeating the name. I keep worshiping the name. And just God is doing miracles. I've seen more and more miracles. Because, and I don't, listen, it's not, it's not this chant, it's not this mantra, because it's not just the name, right? Because we remember, go to Acts, if you're still in Acts, go to chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, verse 13. And it says then, Acts chapter 19, 13, it says, then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists, there were exorcists who cast out demons, some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists said, hey, this is working. This name thing is working. I think we're going to try it. This really seems like a good idea. I mean, look at all the things that are happening. It's clear it's the name because our council, the priests, are all saying it's the name. And so they took it upon themselves to call the name, to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. <laughs> uh, how, how, how's that working for you? Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. It didn't work too well for them, I'm thinking. Amen? Amen. So, I've just been using the name. And, and, I'm, and, I, and, I, and sometimes I, I feel like I'm supposed to be very specific. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, if you say just Jesus, well, there's lots of Jesuses in the world. Did y'all know that? There's like lots of Jesus in the world. The Bible tells there would be. But I remember when I uh, ran our construction company, uh, we had a drywall company that had a guy named Jesus. Right? They called him Jesus, but, but I mean, his name was Jesus. And you know, it never occurred to me to pray in Jesus' name. I mean, he'd come on our job site and we say, yeah, hey, Jesus is on the job site. This is awesome, right? But I never went up and said to someone, like say someone was sick on the job site or something, I never said, oh, I'm gonna pray for you in, in, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, right? It's something about the name. There's power in the name. And I wanna encourage you to pray the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth or whatever you know, make sure that it tells all the principalities and all the powers and all the spiritual wickedness in high places, all the powers of hell and every demon. Listen, let me tell you what I'm praying in. I'm not praying in my strength. I'm not praying in my knowledge or my abilities. I'm praying in the name of Jesus, the name above every name. Amen? God thinks Jesus' name is important. Here's what it says in Philippians 2, verse 9 through 11. God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. This is what God did for Jesus. He highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name, that at the name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But here's what, I, here's what I started thinking. If there's so much power in the name, how much more power is in his presence? How much more power resides in us, the Holy Spirit who's God? But Jesus, Jesus said, all authority has been given to me on, on heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them 
everything I've commanded you, and lo, I will be with you even to the end of the age. Listen, there's power in the name. But when we talk about the name, when we pray the name, the important thing is there's power in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one who has all power and all authority. So I just want to encourage you. I just thought, I'm going to learn this, and I'm going to try it. I'm going to try and apply it. And I've seen some amazing miracles happen because there's something about the name. Demons flee when you invoke the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So I want to go into worship again, Tim. I just I want to sing that song again, your great name. And uh, let's, we're not worshiping the name. We're worshiping the one who has the name. We're worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us so that we might live forever. And he resides with us. He lives in our heart. The Holy Spirit has come to reside in our heart. And this great God that we worship lives with us, lives in us, and is with us always. He's here to rebuke the devil. He's here to to restore our finances, to restore our relationship, to do miracles in our lives. Is that amazing? Think about this. Think about this. We have a God that we can call upon his name anytime we want to. We have a God who never leaves us, never forsakes us, is always with us, and is ready, is ready to, 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 to do miracles, to touch people, to do signs and wonders, to speak to us, to touch us, to meet our every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Let's worship that God. Let's worship that Jesus. Let's worship that Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah.